Okay, since about, I would say 2010, I've just kind of been freelancing. Uh, play a gig here and there. But I use the same musicians that I have selected. I have a band I call it the ESB band, Eugene Smiley band. And I got a horn section, I got the Ronnie Reed on trumpet, Louis Rucker on um, saxophone. I got Skip Lacey on keyboards, Bobby Adams on drums, B. Gray on uh, bass guitar. She's also my nurse, too. She takes care of this. And then I got Terry Hamilton, who's an outstanding guitar player. And, uh, and I'm on the rhythm guitar, and um, we have fun. We make it fun. Uh, it's not about the money. Um, whatever we do, it's about fun. If it's no fun, it, then we don't necessarily want to do it. Uh, a lot of people think, how much money am I going to make? How much money am I going to make? Now, this is the deal. We'll work around your budget. And we'll do it like that. Um, I remember back in the day, when I played the gig, I made $15. <clears throat> but now, when I play a gig, I don't care how much I make, but I make sure that I can pay my men at least $100 a piece. I don't need money. I mean, no. Uh, and maybe they don't need it either, but that's disrespect. The appreciation that I have for them putting up with me. <laughs> And the same, I guess they feel the same way about me. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of love in this band. You know, I, uh, I haven't played a gig since I played the blues uh, over at the club over there. Mm -hmm. Now, I still have money from that gig. The guys haven't picked it up. <laughs> Those are the kind of people I like working with. Mm -hmm. People that's not strung out, oh, I gotta pay this, I gotta do that. It ain't gonna get you a job. If you can't get a job, you got a problem. You ain't gonna make it that way in music. You got to have a job. And that's one thing I admire about Carl Davis when I was in Chicago. He says, you're not gonna make it without a job. That's what he was telling the people that was on his label. And I could see that because Brunswick had to pay their rent for them, had to give them money for food. But then again, when you went to the gig, you bring his, all this money back. And when he got through chopping it down, you only got this much left. And that's the way it was. And that's the way it still is today. Uh, musicians don't, uh, they don't want to do nothing but play music. Playing music is great, but you got to be able to afford to play music. You want to be a good player, you got to be able to afford to be a good player. Bands don't stay together because they don't work enough. Well, I can understand that too. If you're working with this band and this band and this band and this band, well, which band are you really with? I see that all the time. I don't really care for that. I got one set of musicians that I use, and that's it. Just to go play a gig, I gotta go there and find a drummer. I gotta go there and find a uh, bass player. No, 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 These people know my sound. My sound is what appeals to my audience. Not just anything. And that's the way I look at it. And I've been pretty successful at, at, at what I do, you know? Yes, you have. And I, I, I have a pretty decent following. And I need, when I do a gig, I put the message out there, this is what's happening. <clears throat> I need your support. And they all come. Yeah, on, on that event that you had out there at the Lounge 42 yeah. for the jam, 
and I know most of the cameras that showed up, I'm sure you probably called them up and say, hey, I'm doing this, I'd like you to show up, and by gosh, they did. Yeah. Great group of people. Some of the best artists in town, they're with you yeah. also, like D.C. Bellamy and all those guys. Um, yeah, it was, a, it it was a great of, event. It's kind of like a family thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, y'all. When I say y'all, I'm talking about all my musician friends. Mm -hmm. These are my people. Mm -hmm. I am them. I'm for the them. When they say they need me, there we go. <clears throat> now, what I've been doing lately here is I've been doing a lot of documentaries. I did the documentaries for the organization Girls. This is an organization that's uh, involved with domestic violence. You know, beat them up and knock them down, knock the women down, beat them all up and put them out, kick them out. They don't have a place to go, they don't have a place to stay, they don't have, can't feed their kids. But anyway, um, this is how domestic violence. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, and then there's the, uh, the gang violence. I'm working with uh, Mr. Hutton. Cornell Hutton is somebody you need to meet. Cornell Hutton and I'm very close. We're working on gang violence. I did quite a few um, uh, documentaries on that. I put the music together for them. And um, and I'm enjoying doing it. And I do this in my heart. It ain't about money. Mm -hmm. It's just something I like doing. And uh, but that's what I've been doing now. And now I've uh, also, I told you about the project Kansas City Got Top. Due to the mayor the elections, it has kind of caused that not to happen, as I wanted it to. But I still got it on the table. And I think after all the issues with the election is uh, settled, we'll do it again. Now, it appears that the city is grumbling. But I've always been a type of person. Don't tell me what I can do. You don't know what I can do. You have no idea what I can do. And I will show you what I can do. That's the approach I have. That's the approach I have toward the city. You can't tell. I got all this talent and you gonna tell me what I can do. I don't think so. I will go right around you and get what I want. I've done that so many times. Mm -hmm. I went to a meeting one time when we first started to put KC Defense together. And he says, uh, but the outcome of it was, uh, do you know what would happen if we put a million dollars in it? In a black neighborhood, I closed my briefcase in and walked up. Because I knew then that they did not want this to happen. So we went around it. I went down to Nashville <coughs> and got a distributor out of Nashville. Next thing I knew, damn boom, we was on the charts. It didn't have nothing to do with it. You know, and so there's ways you can do get things done. 